Hello, everyone. Uh, today, we welcome you, Bumerne Kifuruk, a project manager and ticketing software expert at Softyarn, working there for more than 11 years. And he's been recently presenting his intriguing topic on blockchain in ticketing world at ticketing professionals in Birmingham, as well as participating at many other ticketing events. And now he would like to share his current thoughts on blockchain, some popular misconceptions, its use cases in ticketing, and why you might want to consider using this technology. So Lubomir, the screen is yours now. Thanks, Natalie, for your introduction. Let's start with a few words about SoftJar. We are a technology services company and work closely with companies in ticketing and finance industries. A couple of years ago, we started to get questions from our clients about blockchain. Should we be using it? How we can use it? What are the best uses of it? Since then, we have built blockchain ecosystems and worked with clients to define the most appropriate use cases for their industries. I would like to share here our ideas how ticketing and blockchain worlds intersect. Before we go deeper into this, I would like to talk about what is hidden under the hood of the term blockchain. So what is blockchain? If I had to describe blockchain in just a few words, I would say distributed, immutable database. Or in other words, decentralized and forgeable ledger. Quite a few smart words, right? Well, let me explain them. So distributed means that there is no central control unit that approves or declines the transactions, like in regular bank, but the decision is made via a consensus of the whole network of computers, each having a copy of this database. The data in blockchain is stored in blocks that are linked and secured using cryptography. Each block typically contains a cryptographic hash of the previous block, a timestamp, and the transaction data. Immutable means that the data is kind of set in stone. Once any block is added to the chain after being approved, it can be altered. In case you want to modify something, you have to add a new block on top of the previous block. So we can consider blockchain also as a growing journal that adds pages from time to time. Transparent or public means that everyone can see what is inside a block and make sure everything is real, nothing is fake. That is good for the fraud prevention. But what if you want to utilize the benefits of distributed computing and immutable records, but don't want to open the data to everyone? Let's say you may want to share unforgeable medical records of a patient between the medical institutions, but obviously don't want them to be available to the public. Another example could be a shared customer's credit history between the banks, but again, not open to the public. Well, there is an option for you as well. Private blockchain is a blockchain that has an access control layer built into the protocol. This means that network participants have control over who can join the network and who can participate in the consensus process of the blockchain. Private blockchain is also much faster and effective in terms of processing power as only defined nodes are involved in the transaction approval. Okay, so far we have defined what is a blockchain, but I think it worth to talk what talk about what a blockchain is not. Blockchain is not Bitcoin. It is indeed a popular misconception that blockchain is synonymous to Bitcoin. The truth is blockchain does provide the technology for, for cryptocurrency transactions, but its uses are far broader than those of digital currencies. Blockchain is not a product. Rather, it is a tool that we can use to build an existing, existing array of business solutions. Blockchain is not a distributed database replacement. Blockchain complements distributed database technology by adding some unique features such as data immutability and transparency. That said, distributed database is likely a better and more mature solution where a business network is not involved. As we know, blockchain is a perfect platform for the digital currency Bitcoin for which it was developed. In fact, it turned out to be interesting for other fields especially when blockchain version 2 came into a play. Blockchain version 2 introduced a significant improvement to the transaction handling, as it allows writing programmable complex scenarios called smart contracts. A smart contract is a contract from our life, but the one written using a programming language and automatically executed as soon as certain triggers are pulled. 
In addition, smart contracts can operate not only on the digital currencies, but basically on any assets. The simplest smart contract could state, initiate good shipment once the payment is received. If we think about ticketing, we can say, proceed all tickets refund if an event is canceled or control distribution of comp tickets to specific clients only, or limit the resale price to no more than 50% of the initial price, and so on. The possibilities are endless. Smart contracts are one of the killing features of the blockchain implementation called Ethereum. Ethereum is a public blockchain-based decentralized platform that <coughs> you may consider it as a global virtual machine where you can easily deploy and run your applications in the form of smart contracts. Because of that, Ethereum has become a perfect environment for the new blockchain applications, with ticketing not being an exception. We would probably need a whole separate session to talk about blockchain itself, but let's focus on some blockchain and ticketing use cases. I see blockchain being used for three different use cases, although there might be some more, for sure. The first case I would like to talk is a complete Ethereum-based ticketing systems with own cryptocurrency. It is the deepest and therefore resource and budget-intensive blockchain integration. In this case, the core of the system is based on the smart contract that regulates tickets flow from the event creation to the checking at the doors. The system offers own digital currency that is used for several purposes, event publication, ticket sales, resale, and exchange. Usually tokens are sold during the ICO, which stands for initial coin offering, and it's a great way to raise some funds without sharing ownership of the company, all unlike the traditional IPO. Basically, people send money, usually Bitcoin or Ether, and in return, they receive your currency tokens. The hope is that tokens will be in high demand, which would raise the currency value. Here, here are some examples of the recently emerged startups that are using such approach. We can take a look at the use case description from the Guts Tickets white paper. In their case, customer will need to download a mobile application to set up their identity. After a customer pays in fire, system tokens are transferred to the user's wallet and the smart ticket is linked with the user's account. Both of these state changes are registered on chain. At the event horizon, system contracts activates all of the user's smart tickets, delivering the QR codes needed for entry to the ticket owner's verified phones. Some systems talk a lot about building an open protocol to unite different ticketing market stakeholders. If that happens, there will be a shared pool of tickets which can be transparently used by many independent ticket sellers who implement the protocol. Actually, that is a good idea as it adds more sense to the blockchain usage. It is wise to choose it when we have a business network rather than a single organization. Unfortunately, there are different open protocols at the moment, so it, the future will tell us if this initiative will succeed or not. As far as I know, there is an idea to create a ticketing blockchain consortium that could standardize such protocol. As a conclusion, let's summarize some pros and cons for this use case. Well, first of all, we have full control over the tickets flow from the initial sale to the event checking. And we have no fraudulent transaction and chargebacks. I, I need to clarify this. It means no chargeback within the systems, as all payments are direct without men in the middle. So there is no way to initiate a chargeback. Obviously, it is still present when we purchase either using credit, credit cards but maybe in the future we will all have a cryptocurrency wallet like we have bank cards now. Tickets are unforgeable, and they are a digital asset controlled by the system. We also have scalper prevention. Ticket reselling is also controlled by the system rules. And we can build an open ticket pool, so we have a bigger chance for sold out events. Okay, that sounds good, but what are for the cons? And yes, we do have a few of them. So first of all, technology is not yet mature. <clears throat> so there may be a risk of unforeseen challenges. For example, there is an open question on scalability and cons consensus algorithms. Also, some systems are going to use the FPFIS, which stands for interplanetary file system, and that is still in the alpha state, so I'm not sure how it will behave in production. And 
<coughs> we also have a long transaction time. In ideal situation, transaction time in Ethereum is about 20 seconds and depends on the network load and fee you have attached to the transaction. Currently, crypto market is volatile, so token price may vary. We also have a long time to market. Technically, it could take more than a year to launch such a platform. And it is quite costly, as it requires quite a lot of blockchain developers' time. And there are not so many of them on the market. This time, the cost could go down as more blockchain devs become available. Okay, so what if you don't want to rewrite your ticketing service to take advantage of blockchain? Well, let's talk about second use case. It is ticketing, tickets migration to the blockchain. And that is the case when you don't want to rebuild the system from scratch and invest a lot of budget and resources. And at the same time, you want to cope with the main ticketing pains like scalper prevention, secondary market regulation, and knowing who your real customer is. So you may want to move the tickets sold via existing solution into a blockchain ecosystem so they are no longer a piece of paper but a digital asset that the system can control. Once a buyer purchases a ticket for an event, they have to download the mobile wallet to see it. As in the previous use case, the ticket will transform from a token ID to a barcode under certain predefined conditions, like just in the gate area before <coughs> the event start time. This way, the ticket owner will not be able to leave the ticket on the secondary market like StarHub, as actually they own the right to leave the event and not the voucher they can transfer to anyone else. At SoftJohn, we have developed a proof of concept based on the IBM People Ledger to verify that such use case is achievable in the reasonable amount of time and even with a small team. Basically, we have implemented the API to import tickets data into the blockchain and smart contract that sets the rule for the tickets transfer. Within this POC, we also developed the mobile application that shows authenticated users their tickets and allows them to transfer to another user. Last year, Theogix presented their project to restrict from tickets transfer by moving tickets to the private blockchain ecosystem. As far as I know, the results were quite successful and they are planning next phases. Okay, so what if you don't want to touch your main revenue flow and still build blockchain solutions? Let's talk about third use case. And this is add-on services using blockchain. So <clears throat> we have worked on the add-on blockchain loyalty app that can be used by venue owners or event organizers to offer rewards to their ticket buyers. The service can replenish customers with some coins during initial purchase that could be used to redeem a discount on the next purchase. The idea is to allow other partners to join the network and offer discounts for different goods or services. For example, if you are a venue owner, you may want to partner with a nearby restaurant and offer some discount for your ticket buyers. And you both want to be sure that all transactions are valid and you can trust them. As a conclusion, I would like to say that blockchain has definitely triggered the business community and opened the doors to the new ideas <coughs> whether the companies will succeed in deploying blockchain technology to create products and services consumers will trust and adopt remain to be seen. The demand for blockchain-based services is on the rise, and the technology is maturing and advancing at rapid pace. With more money being poured into blockchain-based startups, consumers should not be surprised to see <coughs> distributed services and products becoming more mainstream in the near future. So if you have an idea how you would like to use blockchain in your ticketing service or with your entertainment partners, we would be happy to work with you to flesh out your use case and determine if blockchain will work for what you want to do. Thank you so much for the interesting presentation, Lubomir. And I see that we have a few questions from the audience. So the first one was, uh, can you name a few examples of blockchain use cases that you received recently? Really, we have worked on a wide range of use cases and received requests outside of our usual domains. Some examples were related to recycling, landing, music, and even cattle industry, where it can be used as a solution to prevent fraud during cattle sales. Another example was for music industry, where the company would like to track download and usage of music records. With the help of smart contract, it was possible to track and make sure artists are paid when music is downloaded or transferred to others. 
And another question was, uh, could those solutions have been built on something else? Uh, was blockchain really needed here? Technically, this type of system doesn't have to be built on blockchain, as it could be implemented with other time-proven technologies. That said, blockchain was chosen for its two unique characteristics, immutability and transparency. And the last question for today, so have you heard about any successful use cases of other ticketing companies implementing blockchain? Yes, there are some successful cases that I know about. As an example, we've been talking with Secutix and last year they presented their project to restrict comp tickets transfer by moving tickets to the private blockchain. And actually the results were quite successful and they are playing next phases. There are several other blockchain ticketing companies on the market and some of them are only testing the value of blockchain and doing betas, while others already have good results. And, but of course the future will show if blockchain stands in ticketing or will remain just a trendy word. I hope it will stay. So thank you so much for the presentation, Lubomir, and thank you everyone for joining us today. Thank you.